the dream. This is a man who was inescapable in the mid to late 2000s. He really was the radio killer with his songs being all over radio stations day and night. The man just has hit after hit after hit of his own, but some people might not know that he's also written a lot of your favorite songs of the past decade plus. I decided to break this video into two parts where I talk about his solo career, mainly in the first part, and then in the second part, I'll talk about his writing and production credits in the second half. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys could be doing a million other things right now, but instead you're here with me and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That'd be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Let me know where you're tuning in from, represent where you're from, especially if you're from Atlanta. Comment down below your favorite The Dream Project song, all of that, because I want to know. But without further ado, let's get into the video. I've always wanted to interview The Dream. The man is supremely talented, but I really want to ask him a simple question. What's up with his fascination with gorillas? Like, like he mentions gorillas in songs like I Love Your Girl, Rockin' That Thing, and My Love. Like, we beat it up like gorillas. Like, he be saying that. Like, I just want to know. I'm just messing around, so let's get to the actual story. The Dream was born Terrius Nash in Rockingham, North Carolina in September of 1977. He would move to Atlanta from North Carolina when he was only a few years old. Growing up, there was a lot of Otis Redding, Sam Cooke, Michael Jackson, and people of that nature playing around the house when The Dream was growing up. He would attend Grove Park Elementary where he remembers seeing T.I. roaming the halls. In high school, The Dream took night classes with Andre 3000 of outcast as well. He would play in a band during his middle school days but decided to go solo around the late 80s when LaFace Records were starting and they started scooping up local R&B talent. This was also around the time that Freak Neek was a thing and The Dream has said that every time you hear an 808 drum machine beat on one of his songs it comes from Freak Neek. The Dream would also learn how to play guitar, drums, and trumpet while he was growing up. Sadly around when The Dream was 15 his mother would pass away and this would have a huge effect on his life and music career. This inspired him to write songs. About this in an interview he would say, watching her as the months went by knowing that she was going to pass that dialed my emotions right up. The corniest things in pop songs about life and love and loss, I was thinking about them on a very real level from my mother's perspective. He notes the song Umbrella with Rihanna as an example. He has writing credits on the song for those who don't know. I'll talk more about this song in a little bit. After the death of his mother, he would move in with his grandfather who was a concrete mason. He credits this for his work ethic. He came out of a bad time for blacks in the south, but even though we lived in the hood, we had a boat, some cars, and a house that was paid for. So I've always had a different outlook on life. There's nothing I can't do. My uncle used to say, you'll go on and become the dream of the family. That's how I got my name. A meeting with a man by the name of Tricky, real name Christopher Stewart, would change the Dream's career. They knew of each other from being around Atlanta and the Dream met him right as he was starting his songwriting career. A man by the name of Rob Hunter introduced the two and initially the Dream was working with Tricky's brother, Laney. Laney and his brother Tricky were in a camp called Red Zone, which was one of the many camps in Atlanta at the time. Laney would produce B2K's song Everything and the Dream would have writing credits on the song. Looking back at it now, it's pretty obvious the Dream wrote it. This is the song that got him a publishing deal with Laney Store's publishing company and the Dream has said that he doesn't know what would have happened to him if he didn't write this song. The possibility of him being kicked to the curb was high but luckily he came through and got it done. This was a make or break situation for him because four weeks before he wrote the song, he quit his job in which he was working at a collection agency. He figured that if he never put 100% into music, then he would never be great enough to stay in. Laney is how the dream got into the door, but it would be through Tricky where him and the dream would go on an insane run together. Tricky can't remember why or how they started writing songs together, but every time that they did write songs together, even when they weren't together, it was always something that was 
really close to being special even back then. Everything just clicked for them. The song Everything with B2K came out in 2002, but the dream would catch the break of a lifetime in 2003 when he got a call from Tricky. The dream was in Atlanta at the time, riding in his 1992 Cadillac when Tricky called him and said that they were going to do a song with Britney Spears, who was huge at the time. The dream hung up the phone and was really happy about this opportunity and Madonna ended up being on the song as well. The dream has a writing credit for the song and Me Against the Music would be the lead single for Britney's album In The Zone with the song peaking at number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. This is something that the dream doesn't agree with because he feels like the single Toxic should have been the first single due to that song ended up being a top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100. He also feels like this opportunity to work with Britney Spears came too early for him because he was just starting his songwriting career and here he is being a writer of a song for a megastar like Britney Spears. What this experience did do for the dream was build his confidence internally due to him being connected to the song via being a writer. There ended up being multiple people who received writing credits and they ended up changing things that the dream originally wanted like words and verses. 2003 would also be the year when the dream would start seeing singer Nivea and they would get married the next year in 2004. Before this though, the dream had written the song OK, which was initially intended to be for Jennifer Lopez, but upon meeting Nivea, he felt like it fit her more. I've also seen that since Nivea was on Jive Records at this time, Jive wanted the record to go to Sierra because this track was crunk and beat and fit Sierra's image at the time because the song OK was recorded back in 2003 before Sierra dropped her debut album Goodies in 2004. The song OK went on to be Nivea's lead single for her 2005 album Complicated. There would be a four year gap between Nivea's self titled album and her 2005 album complicated. Jai would be going through a merger during the creation of her complicated album and according to Nivea, Jai was dropping the ball. It would be the dream who helped her get her songs together and the two would end up getting married and having kids together. The dream would have writing credits, production credits, and would feature on Nivea's album complicated with him appearing on the song I Can't Mess With You which is a phenomenal song by the way and you should listen to it if you haven't. But during the time leading up to the dream's debut album at this time, he learned how to produce his own records because he didn't want to need anyone. He invested the time and money into himself to create the style that we know today. It took him a while, but once again, he got another big opportunity and it came in the form of the song Umbrella, which eventually went on to be Rihanna's. The Dream has said that this song came in a moment in his life where he felt like Muhammad Ali in a sense that his back was against the ropes and he was taking hits. The Dream was now out of his publishing deal and even though he had a Jaguar car at the time, he was scrounging for money. I told myself, write a hit, stop playing around. You know what a hit sounds like. You know what songs you like from people. If you went to make a playlist, you knew what the F a hit was. If you don't, you know how to make it. I just told myself that. That day, literally, Tricky and I were moving stuff around in the studio. His cousin, Cuck Corell, who now is side by side with Rihanna, records a lot of stuff now. Cuck finds this kick loop. Trick starts to play this chord, I kind of walk in at this same moment, and I hear it. I heard about maybe 8 bars of what Trick was doing, I said, man turn the mic on. He's like, we're not ready. We just started moving this stuff around, we've got to plug it up, we've got to get it right. I'm like, turn the mic on. I maybe had to go back and change 4 words, but I sung it from the top to the end exactly as is how you hear the song today, right now. You can hear the demo the Dream did for Umbrella on YouTube right now, it's definitely interesting to hear. We know that Rihanna ended up with the song, but however, this song wasn't initially intended for her. The song was originally written for Britney Spears. As said earlier, The Dream previously had worked with Britney Spears, and in 2007, Britney Spears would have the infamous Umbrella Incident. When writing the song, The Dream at first was thinking about God and how God would say he has you under his umbrella because he'll protect you. As him and Tricky were putting the track together, the umbrella 
came to symbolize and represent love as a protective shield. This was believed to be the song that would help Britney Spears launch herself back into the public eye with fresh music. Britney at this point in time started to work on her new album, which eventually went on to be her blackout album, I believe. This brought the idea of the dream helping out his friend by giving her a record, but Britney Spears' camp would pass on the record and Britney would never even have a chance to hear the record before it came out. The story doesn't end there though because Teo Cruz had the opportunity to have the song and wanted it to be the single for his album at the time, but that ended up not happening. Mary J. Blige was also eyed for the record as well, but she ultimately passed on the song due to Grammy commitments and other things that she had going on at the time. We all know that Rihanna would end up with the song and saying it was huge was a complete understatement. It went number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for seven straight weeks and went number one on the UK singles chart for 10 consecutive weeks, which is insane. This song ended up being huge for Rihanna in her career. But another record that would be big for the dream was the song Bed, which he wrote and would end up in the hands of Jay Holiday. I wrote Bed and said, oh wow, you know what? If I can write this record for him, I can probably do a whole album of this stuff. Hold up, if I can do this with Tricky and the sound we have on this side and mesh them into an album, that would probably be amazing. The song Bed went on to peak at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100 in which the dream has songwriting and production credits on the song. The track before being released was considered for Chris Brown but the dream said that it was his record and he ended up giving it to Jay Holiday. According to the dream, Chris Brown would say that the song won't be number 1 unless he's on it. The dream would bet someone $500,000 that the song would go number 1 and he said that he collected his money because the record went number one on the hot R&B hip hop songs chart for three straight weeks. Due to Chris Brown thinking that he had the song, this created tension between Chris and The Dream, and according to The Dream, Chris said the wrong thing to him, and he's a man of principle. But this is the record where The Dream called the at the time Island Dev Jam executive Karen Quack, and he told her that he wanted to be an artist. He figured out what his voice needed to sound like to sell records, so this is when he sent her the song Bed, and she thought it was really good. You can also hear the demo version with the dream of bed on YouTube as well. Another reason why the dream wanted to become an artist is because he wanted to take full advantage of his career because he didn't want to wait for people like Usher, Chris Brown, Beyonce, or Rihanna to sing his songs. He just felt like he needed to showcase what he did beyond artists at that particular point. The dream would ultimately sign with Def Jam and become the founder of Radio Killer Records. He would get to work and released the single Shawty is a 10 featuring Fabulous officially in July of 2007. However, The Dream has said that this song was on the radio before he was ever even signed. The story behind the track Shawty is a 10 is that The Dream would hit up Carlos McKinney who did production on the track to give him a track. The Dream then wondered what he needed to say to beautiful girls to feel good. Shawty is a 10 came up as an idea and the rest is pretty much history. It was his first record and the one that made him decide to have a career in the music business as an artist. The Dream would not be in the studio when Fabulous did his verse, but he was elated by his verse when he first heard it, and rightfully so because it's a really good Fabulous verse. How Fabulous even got on the song is an interesting story. L.A. Reid wanted Young Jock to be featured on the song at first, and The Dream knew Young Jock because they both went to the same high school, with Young Jock being younger than The Dream. The record was sent to Young Jock, and he said that he was cool on the record. After Young Jock passed on the record, then Fabulous was eyed and he became the feature. L.A. Reid told The Dream that he had to make some changes to do the record because he can't say Shawty is the ish on the radio. This is where the idea of saying you attend came from. The song also having no hook was intentional because in an interview, The Dream said that the song was so great up to that point, why would he ever even put a hook? Saying he was not putting a hook became the hook. Shawty is a 10 ended up peaking at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. The next single for the album would be Falsetto and would be released in September of 2007. 
about this record, the dream would say, I just wanted to have a record with that R&B vibe and a big guitar solo in it. It reminded me of the 90s. I knew that nobody knew what falsetto was and that was just a play on words. Still to this day, people are like, what's falsetto? And I respond, it actually is what it says. It was great that the song educated so many people that listen to music and that actually do make love. So for me, it's a purely educational song. It was a pretty dope one on my part. I have to at least pat myself on the back. Falsetto would end up peaking at number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100. The debut album of The Dream, Love Me All Winter, Hate Me All Summer, would release in December of 2007, peaking at number 30 on the Billboard 200 charts, selling 59,000 copies in its first week. The Dream has said that the writing and recording for the Love Hate album took a total of 9 days with 12 tracks from the recording sessions making the final cut. In an interview, he would say that Nivea had brought the element of just being even more sincere than he has before to the album. She helped him to open up the other side of him that connects with the everyday woman. Sadly, right after the release of this album, they would file for a divorce from each other. I Love Your Girl would end up being the third and final single for the album. The song ended up peaking at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. This was the last record that was done for the album with it almost officially not being on the main album at first. LA Reid had told The Dream to do one more record and The Dream ended up creating I Love Your Girl. This is why Young Jeezy's verse on the song is on the remix rather than being on the album. A song that The Dream gets questioned about a lot on this album though is the song Nicki with people questioning who Nicki is with some people thinking that Nicki is Nivea. The song Nicki is part of a trilogy of songs like Nicki, Nicki Part 2, and Abyss being the three songs in the trilogy. The Dream has declined to talk about who Nicki is in interviews. In 2019, The Dream would announce a Nicki album, but as of 2022, this hasn't dropped yet. Living a Lie is another popular track off of the album and it features Rihanna. She would do the record and this is one of the Dream's favorite features due to their chemistry together. The Love Hate album is noted as being a defining moment for the collision of rap and R&B music. The Dream was upset that this album didn't get any Grammy recognition, which rightfully so because this is a really great album and aged like wine in my opinion. After this album in 2008, The Dream would go on to be an opening act on the Heart of the City tour, which was headlined by Mary J. Blige and Jay-Z. However though, The Dream would receive the Best New Artist Award at the BT Awards in 2008. At the very end of this year, the single Rockin' That Thing for his sophomore album would release and peaked at number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100. This song was intended for Jamie Foxx, and Jamie Foxx's song Digital Girl that Dream ended up featuring on was on the Love vs. Money album at a point in time. Beyonce's song 1 Plus 1 was also on the Love vs. Money album at a point in time, but the Dream took it off and gave it to Beyonce. My Love would be the second single for the album featuring Mariah Carey. This song ended up peaking at number 82 on the Billboard Hot 100. The Dream would speak his duet with Mariah Carey into existence with the Dream spreading news of the duet before he even approached her about it. He wrote the track with Mariah Carey in mind but had no idea whether Mariah Carey or the at the time Island Def Jam label boss LA Reid would approve the duet. LA Reid would have a meeting with The Dream and The Dream would lie and tell him that he had a record called My Love with Mariah Carey knowing that he hadn't even asked her to get on it. LA Reid didn't know what the heck The Dream was talking about but Mariah Carey ultimately ended up being on the record so The Dream manifested that into existence. Some songs that The Dream would feature on in 2008 were Please Excuse My Hands with Plies and Jamie Foxx which went on to peak at number 66 on the Billboard Hot 100, Baby with LL Cool J when Went on to peak at number 52 on the Billboard Hot 100. Cookie Jar would be another song that was with the Gym Class Heroes, and that song peaked at number 59 on the Billboard Hot 100. In March of 2009, The Dream would release Love vs. Money, which peaked at number 2 on the Billboard 200, selling 151,000 copies in its first week. The album was supposed to come out in 2008, but was delayed until 2009. About where his head was at around the time of the making of this album, The Dream 
Kareem would say, that's where I was. I was coming into a lot of money. It was a different time for me financially. So now I'm gonna see what everybody's about and everybody was just what I thought they were. Oh my God, it makes people act an odd way. Especially when they grow up with an ideal of what the American dream is. They have these American shades on and they're in that place rocking out, chasing their tail in a circle, forgetting what pure happiness is. Walking on the Moon featuring Ye would be the third single for the album and would release in April of 2009. This song is an ode to Michael Jackson, who's a huge influence on the dream. Sweat It Out would be the fourth and final single for the album. Some other notable songs from this album would be Fancy and Let Me See the Booty, which was a bonus track for the album and was the first promotional single for the album. When it comes to features the dream did this year, he would appear on Fabulous's song Throw It In The Bag, which peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. He would also feature on Snoop Dogg's song Gangsta Love, which peaked at number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. 2009 will also be the year that the Dream would get married to Christina Milian. After this year, we get into the Love King era of the Dream. In March of 2010, he would release the single Love King and it would peak at number 92 on the Billboard Hot 100. Makeup Bag would be the second single for this album and this song didn't manage to chart on the Billboard Hot 100. The Dream thinks that this song is very underrated and he has said that his label at the time did everything they could to mess the song up. Frustration was building up within the dream at this time because he planned for Love King to be his last album. As to why this was, the dream would say it was because everybody was trying to quote unquote kill the dream. He felt like he was the only one who could kill his career as the dream, but did clarify that he would still be producing writing and featuring on other artist albums, he just wouldn't be dropping any more albums. Love King would end up dropping in June of 2010 after being delayed. The album would peak at number four on the Billboard 200 chart, selling 58,000 copies in its first week. The one thing I will say about this album though is that my favorite song by The Dream is called F-I-L-A, which stands for Fall In Love Again. I really feel like this song could have been a single. That song is amazing and it does suck that after this album, The Dream was still around doing his thing, songwriting, producing, and featuring, but his solo work didn't get the same shine as it once did. After Love King, things got really bad for The Dream. He was having label issues, him and Christina Milian got divorced, and there's a whole bunch of other like messy stuff that happened in his personal life that I'm really not gonna get into, you know what I mean? I'm really not gonna get into that into this video. Things around him were falling apart and musically, he would move away from his Love album series. The album Love 4, Diary of a Mad Man, which was supposed to be the follow-up to the Love King album, was set to be released in September of 2011, but sadly, it never got put out. This album got pushed back indefinitely due to what's said to be quote unquote contract talks with Def Jam. Instead of releasing this album, The Dream opted to release his free download album, 1977, which was the year that he was born under the name Terrius Nash, which is his real name. 1977 would release in August of 2011. He commented that the business of a label is to make money, his business was to make music. He was gonna get paid if he he did it right so this is why he was fine with releasing a free album it was in his words like advertisement for him 1977 was recorded in just two weeks with this album admittedly being a very personal album from the dream that chronicled his experiences over the past few years at this point in time. This album got so deep to the point that the dream received concerned phone calls from people who didn't expect to hear him sound so emotionally damaged on the album. Dev Jam wasn't too happy about him releasing this project, but 1977 would receive a re-release in December of 2012 with this new version featuring 10 previously released tracks plus two new songs, including AK-47 and Tender Tendencies. This year, The Dream would feature on the Ye and Jay-Z song No Church in the Wild for their Watch the Throne album. The song would peak at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100. The making of the album Watch the Throne had been wrapping up when Jay-Z would play the song Holy Grail. Kanye really wanted the song Holy Grail to be on Watch the Throne, but Jay-Z was adamant that the song was going to be on his solo album. This is when The Dream stepped in because he was told to create a song that was close to Holy Grail. He 
he also notes that Jay-Z playing Holy Grail changed the Wash the Throne album because Ye and Jay would make six more records and the song Otis would be one of them. 2012 would also be the year that the Dream would receive an executive VP of an r position at Def Jam. His responsibilities were to oversee the progress of current and new artist projects, signing new talent to the label, and working in a production capacity with artists on the Def Jam roster. The very next year, in May of 2013, the Dream would release his final album on Def Jam for play. The album managed to peak at number 16 on the Billboard 200, selling 23,000 copies in its first week. Not that long after this, The Dream would no longer be with Def Jam no more. I mean, after this, The Dream never really stopped dropping music. It was mainly mixtapes, EPs, and a visual album by the name of Genesis. During this time, The Dream was doing work with people like Jay-Z, Beyonce, Ye, Nas, Pusha T, etc. He wouldn't drop another album until Menage a Trois, which contains over 40 songs and released in 2018. The Dream says that he doesn't save records and that this project was comprised of all new material. There would be a fourth installment in the series with that releasing in 2020. This is also the year that he would do a versus against Sean Garrett, who you should definitely go look up to because Sean Garrett has also pinned your favorite hits as well. As for what the dream is doing now, I mean, he's been doing what he's always been doing. He's still producing, writing, featuring, and doing his solo work. The man is well accomplished with him having five Grammys for his work. He's branched out and has owned businesses, looked into film, done fashion, and things of that nature. He might not be as popping as he once was for his solo work in the late 2000s and early 2010s, but that's, that's very much okay because the man is a musical genius, and in the second part, you're going to find out about about some of your favorite songs that he's contributed to. For this second part, I'm going to be going through the songwriter production career of The Dream. This part won't necessarily be in order as far as years tracks came out, but in this part, you'll see how elite this man's pen is. Many might know that The Dream has had a long working relationship with Jay-Z and Beyonce. As noted earlier, I said that The Dream ended up giving the song One Plus One to Beyonce, but did you know that he has writing credits on the song Single Ladies for her as well? How the song came about is that at the time, The Dream was on tour with Jay-Z and Mary J. Blige. In an interview, he would say, so the second track Tricky pulls up is Single Ladies. He's done the beat, but that's all. In my head, I've conjured up what I want to talk about in terms of subject matter, but I don't have any melodies. I was doing this thing that now I see Jay-Z do, sitting there and compartmentalizing. I could tell Trick was looking at me, trying to figure out what I'm doing. He said, okay, okay, let's start on another one. I said, oh, hell no. We're going to do this stuff right here. He said, all right, I'll step out for a second. I walk in the booth and it may have taken two takes to get single ladies. Started out with all the single ladies just like the song goes. After two takes, about 75% of the song is done. I knew that talking about B's life and what you probably understand of it with her and Jay being married or not being married would strike a chord with people because everybody wanted to know what was going on. The song was a smash hit, peaking at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for four non-consecutive weeks. Single Ladies was written in about 17 minutes according to The Dream but the man has done countless songs with Beyonce. Love on Top being another one with that peaking at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. Who Run the World Girls is another song he has writing credits on in which that song peaked at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100. Megan Thee Stallion Savage remix with Beyonce also peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and J Balvin's Mi Gente remix with Beyonce peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. Flawless, Partition, Countdown, End of Time, XO, Beyonce's part in Filling Myself with Nicki Minaj, and Six Inch are also all songs that The Dream has writing credits on with him working with Beyonce. Recently, he's worked with her on her latest album Renaissance on songs such as Break My Soul, Church Girl, and Energy. 
He has writing credits on pretty much half of the album. Another huge artist that's a woman that the Dream has worked with is Mariah Carey. They would do the song My Love for Dream's Love vs. Money album, but the Dream would also write the song Obsessed for her. Obsessed would peak at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100. Once Mariah Carey found out that the Dream could demo records, she wanted him to do all of them for her album. He didn't really want to do it because he felt like Mariah was awesome and they basically ended up doing her whole album. He's credited pretty much all over her memoirs of an imperfect angel album. About writing the song Obsessed, the Dream would say, Mariah was talking about somebody with Obsessed, but I didn't know who. I didn't find out she was talking about Eminem until she made the video. These are personal songs I have to write. I've been lucky to have a good imagination or good enough to say something that strikes a chord. And then they say, wow, you wrote that as if you knew exactly what I meant. But everybody usually goes through that same stuff with somebody. So to me, I was just writing my own stuff or what I think if I were you in your shoes. Another song by Mariah that the dream would have a hand in writing would be her song Touch My Body which will peak at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. I think another important quote from the dream is him talking about how he can write these songs about women from their perspective even though he's a man. Songs like Obsessed and Single Ladies. Some people get shocked when they find out that a man or men had a hand in writing them type of songs. It's writing from the perspective of a woman definitely from a closeness with my mother. I feel like I lost my best friend in one way. In another way, that was the love of my life. Her being around older women when I was like, I'm talking about women, jobs, kids, stuff to do. A different world than now, it's a little bit different. Every now and again, everybody is doing that when they get to make their minds up to do that. All her friends there at the house talking about women problems with men usually. They probably haven't changed, of course, but I was just privy to a lot of conversations and a lot of sensitive topics from a woman's standpoint and point of view so I was able, without knowing, to keep that in me to be able to deliver it through songs. A smash hit that The Dream would have part in writing and production credits for a male would be Justin Bieber's song Baby. The story behind it is that L.A. Reid would sign Justin Bieber and a man by the name of Chris Hicks wanted The Dream to work on Justin Bieber's album. The record Baby might not have came out because The Dream requested two hotel days paid for and he would write the record. He was told that this wasn't in the budget and this shocked him because he had just written records like Single Ladies and Touch My Body. In his mind, they clearly didn't want to do the record, but he would receive a phone call that said that his rooms would get taken care of. He ended up writing Baby in about 20 minutes. Tricky would flesh out the beat and when it got time for Justin Bieber to do his part, he didn't want to cut the record. Scooter Braun, who to this day I believe still manages Justin Bieber, had to tell him to sing it. It's pretty crazy when the dream put it in perspective that this iconic record almost didn't happen because of a two night hotel bill. Throughout his career, the dream has worked with Ye numerous times. A very notable time would be for his work on the iconic song All the Light. The dream had been working on Beyonce's four album at the time when Ye stopped by the studio and told the dream to listen to what ended up being All the Light because they couldn't find a hook. He would end up doing the hook for the record, but Ye was unsure about the hook that the dream did. Ye would pass out and while he was passed out the dream would come up with different ideas and Beyonce would tell the dream that the hook that we have today was the one. A week later the dream would get a phone call that they were going to use his hook and Rihanna ended up doing it. A fun fact about all the lights is that originally it was a young Jeezy record go figure. Earlier I mentioned how the song Holy Grail changed the course of Ye and Jay's Wash Your Throne album and led to the creation of the song No Church in the Wild which the dream featured on. Speaking of Ye, the dream would also feature on the songs Ultra Light Beam and Highlights on his The Life of Pablo album, which dropped in 2016. Earlier, I also mentioned Jay Holiday due to the dream writing the song Bed, but he would also write his song Suffocate as well. Suffocate would peak at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you're older and probably remember when Kim Kardashian would dabble with music. She would release the song Jam Turn It Up and the dream actually wrote and produced the song. The song got a ton of hate and people thought that Kim was trying to embark on a music career but the dream said that that wasn't true because it was his idea for the song and called her to do it. Umbrella is one of if not the biggest songs that the dream has ever done but that's not the only time that he's worked with Rihanna. He's done songs like Birthday Cake which peaked at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100, 
hard, which peaked at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100, and Right Now, which peaked at number 50 on the Billboard Hot 100. There are plenty of other songs he's done with Rihanna, but those are only some of them. The two have a great relationship, and it looks like The Dream and Rihanna have or will work together for her upcoming album whenever that drops. We can literally go on and on about this man's songwriting career. He's written and performed hundreds and hundreds of songs. Just to list off some songs that he's done work on, whether writing or producing or anything of that capacity, Girlfriend by Bow Wow and Omarion, Just Fine by Mary J. Blige, Fashion Killer by ASAP Rocky, Trading Places by Usher, Almeida by Solange, Leaving by Jesse McCartney, Just Like Me by Jamie Foxx, and many more. That's not even counting songs that he's done and he hasn't been credited for. Some spotlight should also be shined on Tricky as well because him and the Dream make a fantastic team together. But that's about it. Like I said, we can go on and on about the Dream. He has done so much in his career already and I don't think that he's letting up anytime soon. All in all, let me know what you thought of the video. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.